Deborah Cohen reporting. Well, joining me now is the director of the Wellcome Trust, Sir Jeremy Farr, who is also a member of the SAGE Committee. Uh, Sir Jeremy, good evening to you. Um, mm -hmm. Wellcome has uh, contributed upwards of $100 million into a search for a vaccine, along with a number of other companies. When you put that money in, did you get a guarantee of who that vaccine would be for, in the sense that it wouldn't be entirely a commercial concern, it would be about affordability? Yeah, this uh, money that Welcome put in, just to say we're not a company, we're a philanthropic organisation, um, but when we put that money in, it was alongside many countries, Germany, uh, Norway, Japan, the UK, Belgium, uh, countries all around the world, Mexico, Ethiopia, um, and the Gates Foundation, and it was put in in order to pool resources so that we could advance a number of different vaccines for COVID-19 and actually some other diseases. Uh, but that we would ensure that when those vaccines were produced, if they were produced, uh, that they would be available to everybody that needed them. And that's a, a prerequisite of the funding that comes under yeah. the umbrella of CEPI, which is part of this global movement to make sure that we have vaccines available for everybody. Yes, but, you know, given that there's upwards of 7 billion people in the world, I wonder, you know, how you make decisions about, for example, I mean, it sounds such a crude thing to say, but the price point, because it's not free at the point of use. There has to be some question of a return for somebody. So how do you decide? Well, firstly, it, it does have to be free for use for the world at the point of delivery. That is one of the uh, engraved uh, principles that we're all working, working towards. Yes, of course, somebody has to pay for that. Somebody has to pay for the risk. Somebody has to pay for the the research, the manufacturing, the distribution, everything that goes with taking science into a vaccine and then vaccines into vaccination. And that's what we're supporting. And in fact, most countries of the world are supporting. Um, and there has to be a payment for that, but that is coming from a combination of the public resources, uh, and therefore the public resources have to have a say in how those vaccines are used and philanthropy. And yes, some of the expertise, a lot of the expertise of industry. If we think of this as us and them, if we think of this as philanthropy or governments or industry working in isolation on their own, we are going to face a horribly tense uh, few months and years ahead of us. But you've what got we to, need to do yeah, is but, bring those together. But but that you know, historically that's not always worked. And I wonder when you look at the Zanoffi case, and you say, well, America puts money in. Donald Trump says, you know, if we get this vaccine away then it's America first. Are you really telling me that we're going to have some kind of incredible altruism that's going to break out into the world and affect everybody? I am. I am, because actually it's not, it is altruism, it is a global public good, but it's also enlightened self-interest. Uh -huh. um, yes, that's an offy GSK vaccine may go forward. I would say that the French government and indeed CEPI has funded some of that work in Paris that's led up to it. So this is not an American vaccine as such. Uh, the vaccine may come from Cuba. It Sorry. could come from Russia. It could come from China. And actually, it's in everybody's enlightened self-interest, including actually the United States, to make sure that we pool the resources. And then every country has access to that vaccine through a pooled resource. Are, you sure, the, are you sure the White House sees it that, that way? Doesn't it depend? Sorry, doesn't it depend on who's in the White House? <laughs> I'm not getting into politics. Um, it doesn't bother me who's in the White House. What bothers me is do we invest in the vaccine research and development? Do we invest in the manufacturing? And do we commit ourselves that we will make this vaccine available to, yes, to the 7 billion yeah. people in the world in an unprecedented way? We've never done this before, but we're facing an unprecedented yeah. crisis so, that the world has never faced on before. Our way, on if our... we do things as we would normally do it, we won't be able to vaccinate the world. On our way to a vaccine, uh, we hear today that there's news on an antibody test. There's been news from first the Swiss um, pharmaceutical giant Roche and then the American uh, one to Abbott to say that they have got 100% effective antibody. Now, that has not, we haven't seen the data on that. So, therefore, we need to make sure before it gets approval that we've got all the data. You know, in your view, how long before the data is out? And how long before we might get approval? I, I think it will come, the approvals will come quickly. These are good tests. Are they perfect? No. Uh, it's very, very difficult to develop an absolutely perfect uh, antibody test that's of use in all ages, across all countries, all ethnic groups. Uh, it's very difficult to produce that. But it will be much better than anything we've had to date, and it's able to be produced 
at an industrial scale so that we can roll antibody testing out in this country and indeed uh, around the world. But antibody testing is only part of it. Antibody testing tells you if you've had the infection in the past, it doesn't tell you if you've got the infection today. And so it can only be worked alongside other tests and indeed, and indeed, which brings me on to your role in SAGE. And just a chance for a very quick question. You'll have heard Jeremy Hunt today say there's too much secrecy in SAGE. You know, why did they not discuss the model the way the South Koreans were doing it? You've always been one who said that there should be more transparency in SAGE. So therefore, I wonder if you would tell me now in, 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 the, in the kind of question of transparency, the minutes of SAGE are still secret. So did SAGE approve the change on the 12th of March? of the policy to drop contract, contact uh, uh, and trace and isolate. Did SAGE I, approve I, that? I, I do not remember the truth of that on the 12th of March. I've always insisted, A, that I'm transparent about being on SAGE, yes, and that, and that testing has been absolutely critical to every country that has successfully so far controlled the epidemic. And as we go forward into this very vulnerable time, when Arnold remains quite high, infection rates in this country remain high, we still have three overlapping epidemics, community, care homes and hospitals, that we must not lift the restrictions anywhere, any, in any rapid way, because if we do, that R0 will go above one and we will back into the exponential phase. The only way we can do that is to lift restrictions incredibly carefully and make sure that we've got testing in place, isolation and contact tracing. And we should not be lifting more of those restrictions until that test isolation contact tracing is in place. We must learn the lessons yes. of why this epidemic got out of control in February and March, and we must not allow that mistake to be happening in May, June and July. So very briefly, was it a mistake to stop that, to change the policy? Was it a mistake? I think in retrospect it was, yes. I think Thank we you. should have been testing earlier and we should have been testing more thoroughly across the whole community and in care homes and in hospitals. Thank you so much. Thank you.